Good morning, beautiful people. I am so excited to be here with you all and with these two beautiful couples. And we're gonna be talking about how do you know? How do you know? Because that's the big question. Um, and thank you, Cody, for that amazing introduction. <laughs> uh, just to give you a moment of background about me, because Cody asked me to. Um, so I am a recovering lawyer turned love coach because <laughs> I decided that instead of being a corporate lawyer who helped rich corporations get richer, I wanted to help people to love themselves more and to get into healthy relationships because that's what life is all about. It's about love, um, starting with love of yourself. So that's what I do and I'm very grateful to do it and to be here and have this conversation. So um, our goal for this conversation is that you all Lee feeling inspired and knowing your worth and knowing that having the love that you want is possible for you. Um, even if it doesn't look the way you thought it would or happen the way you thought it might happen. Um, so let's jump in. So let's talk about compatibility, all right? Um, so the question of how do you know, this is a question that people ask all, ask me all the time. How do I know? How do I know when I'm dating, when I meet somebody? if they're the right person. So I would love to start, I'm gonna start with, with Jeanette and Robert, if you don't mind. So when you first met, what made you think, yeah, I think, uh, I think this might work? Do you wanna tell them the car joke or IHOP or? I mean, it's, uh, it, was, it was more than just one moment, um, I think. You, they're not gonna get the car so joke, the, but. There was this, this joke that I, um, it was a, a thing that I quietly did with the credit card. Right, 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 right. And it was the fact that he was the only person that got it, <laughs> that we were like, maybe there's something here. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because you, you get me. Yeah. Sense of humor was really, really big for us. Um, we just had dry sense of humor, self-deprecating. We didn't, like, when things were just not looking good, we would just crack up. When the lights would go off, we'd be like, wow. Light shut off. <laughs> Like we, we were, our, we would argue with the people at the the the, comp, the bill company. Like you know, get go to a back and forth, and then we would laugh about it afterwards. And like, be like hello again. Yeah, it's like we really broke. Yeah, so you know, we knew them well. <laughs> but a sense of humor is what got us through. I we were we met in Little Rock, Arkansas. It was like the beginning of our careers. We made right, absolutely right. no money. Um, and we just had to make it work uh, however we could. And so like our go-to place was IHOP. That's what we right, could right, afford. Right. Uh, and then we'd feel guilty afterward because we're like, dang, we just spent $35. $30. Um, <laughs> that we don't have. <laughs> but for, for me, what I, how I knew personally that he was the one, um, it was a couple of things. My mom, I'd asked her, it was like she was waiting for me to ask her. I was like, what do you think about Robert? And she was just like, I really, really like him for you. Because she saw how well we got along. We were good friends for about six to eight months before we, got, we, before we started dating. And then ultimately, when I got a job offer in D.C., so I was leaving Little Rock, uh, he was really happy for me. And he was telling me to go for the job. So it mattered to me that he saw that I loved my career. I loved what I was doing. And he was willing to support me doing it, even if it meant us uh, being long distance. And not to try to be long-winded, but... Back to IHOP, it's like, yeah, I, I, I mean, I've told this story uh, uh, several times, but I just didn't have enough money on my card on our first date at IHOP. And she could have been like, that's it, you know, that's, I'm never coming back. Even my mom, when she heard the story, she was like, and you stayed with him? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it was, my credit card got declined and she said, well, you know, let's go to ATM, we can come back. Uh, you know, pay this bill, and uh, from there, we just became like best friends, and so I kind of knew it. And we could pay wow. our light bill now. We're so. good now. That like we're good. good. <laughs> <laughs> we're good now. That is amazing because yeah. I got to tell you, I, I mean, I don't know how many of you are single in the room, but if somebody on a first date, their car got declined, <laughs> it's a wrap. It, it right? helped that we were friends. Right. Yeah, it wasn't, right. it wasn't official date. It helped that we were friends. We, yeah, yeah, you know. we were friends first, so. Okay, well, speaking of friends, <laughs> so Ashley and Daryl, the two of you started off as friends, um, friends with benefits, and um, which, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll speak for myself, and I'm sure I'm not the only person in the room, 
Um, you know, I've, ha I've had a few friends with benefit situations in my past, um, and uh, they didn't usually, they didn't end up like y'all ended up. So how did you do it? How did you know? <laughs> I wasn't looking to it was, it was ordained. It was, I guess it was just meant to be. How do we know? I, you know, for me, I think it was just, we always had a vibe. It was just always a vibe with us. Early on, like literally the, the day we met, we just had a vibe. Yeah, it clicked. And even throughout all of the ridiculousness, situationship and whatever, and growing up, because we met at 22, um, well, you were 23, I believe. I was 23. He's a little bit older than I am. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> by six months. Um, but but um, you never left. Like, we were yeah. always in each other's orbit. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Like, because we went through a lot of shit, like, Carol. stuff. Sorry. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we went through a lot of stuff, and, um, but we always came back to each other, right? Like, she would be pissed at me. I'm annoyed with her questioning me about stuff. Um, but a couple weeks ago, by and it's like, I gotta talk to Bash. I gotta talk to Ashley, um, and vice versa. Like you would always call me and like, D, what are you doing? Like, let's hang out. Let's talk. Let's do this. Let's do that. Um, we could never shake each other. And eventually, obviously, we became best friends. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, she was always somebody. I have a lot of friends or whatever, but I'm I'm not the person that like goes deep with every friend like I'm the like fun friend let's go get drunk or let's go like <laughs> play basketball or something like that um and I kind of keep my thoughts to myself and she was like the only person for me that I could be like let me talk about my career and let me talk about like what I want to do in life and hopes and dreams that I have and trauma that I have from a kid and all of this type of stuff it was only her um so yeah that, that's kind of like I was like this is it. Like, this is my girl. But tell the story about how, like, you knew new. Remember the mm. story? That's a good one. Yeah. We haven't shared that one. <laughs> you, know, you know a couple is, is like, you know, you, you know you're in it when you're prompting each other. <laughs> tell, tell me that story. Tell, tell that, that one. Tell yeah, that yeah. one. That's a good one. Um, well, we had been, again, up and down, through thick and thin, all of that type of stuff. And then we went to um, Santa Barbara for um, New Year's Eve. Um, and so Santa Barbara is beautiful. Um, we had our puppy at the time. She was like six months or something like that. Um, and it was just a beautiful day. Obviously, we live in California, so it's always nice. But like we were in Santa Barbara on the pier. The coastline was like glistening. Uh, everybody was happy. Everybody's like, yeah, it's a new year. I'm going to get rich this year, all of that. Like it was good energy. <laughs> and um, so I was just, we were on the pier and taking pictures and stuff. And I just kind of like, I don't know, I had like an outer body experience and I was like, this is crazy. Like it don't, it, it just don't get no better than this, right? I'm with my best friend. We got our new pit bull. Like, <laughs> like it's a new year. The sun is shining. We on the coastline. I'm from Detroit. So like, come on now. What up though? What up? <laughs> um, so it just was crazy. And I was like, this is my wife. Like, this is, this is the life that I want. This is the person I want to spend the rest of my life with. Um, and then from then on, I was like, all right, let me get these, this money together so I can get this ring. Um, but yeah. yeah. Uh, see, I love this. This is so beautiful. Because what you're both really talking about is the friendship and that trust and that connection th that you built. That, that was what enabled you to know that you were right for each other. Um, and... I'm really glad to hear you say that <laughs> because, I mean, I agree and um, definitely feel friendship is the, is the foundation of my, of my relationship as well. And um, I think that oftentimes people get really caught up in this idea of who they should be with and the list, the idea of the list. And, um, and there's nothing wrong with having a list. It's, you know, you need to know what you want, but it can be a little too rigid, right? <laughs> um, and you can start to block your blessings and block that connection because you're you get so attached to that list. Um, so Jeanette, I wanna ask you, because I know that you had a friend that when you and Robert first started dating was like, no, no, you need to be with somebody who's more established. You need to be with somebody, you know, so somebody was trying to put their list on you, um, which happens, I'm sure. <laughs> 
<laughs> that definitely happens. People try to put their requirements on you. So what, what advice do you have and what was it that made you know, I don't need to worry about all of that. Yeah. I don't need to worry about someone else's idea of who I should be with. Uh, so I had a, I was, I had dated previously, um, older gentleman, well-established, also an attorney, recovering attorney, actually, because he left, left There's a, there's a well. lot of us. There's more of us who used to be lawyers than are lawyers. <laughs> right, right. Uh, great guy, well-established, all of that. Um, and there was just no chemistry. Like, the, our sense of humor was different. We just didn't connect. And I was very much willing to just live that way because he checked everybody's list. Like, he's a smart guy, he's handsome, he's, you know, he's, he was romantic, he, all of that. But there was no chemistry, and it was my girlfriend's telling me, like, this is it, like, this is the guy you should be with. We even went ring shopping. Like, I was, I was re ready to, to take the leap, and that was it. Um, and then ultimately I decided uh, I couldn't live that way. I, because I, I remember thinking specifically, I don't want to go on a double date sitting across from a couple who has that spark mm. and being confronted with something that I will never have. Ooh. And um, that is so real. I decided to walk away from that. And I remember the guy was thinking, like, what are you doing? Because I, I think he knew what he brought to the table. And I was, I was really fearful when I walked away. And then when I met him, it was what I wanted, which was, I really care about laughing. Like, I, I, life is gonna be hard, it's just different types of hard. Mm -hmm. And for me, if you can laugh with me through it, um, and I had been through hard, I had lost my father a year before I met him. If you can laugh with me through it, then we'll be okay. Mm -hmm. If you don't take yourself seriously, um, I didn't necessarily care for someone who had a lot of money. Like, if we can hustle together, if we can build together, as long as I'm not the one pulling the weight, <laughs> If we can work hard together, and I know there's a lot to be said, people have varying opinions on that. I'm like, let's, let's get down to business together and let's celebrate together when we get to the other side. Uh, so, yes. so for him, with him, that was what I saw in him and I was satisfied with that. Yeah, I love that. And actually on that, because in terms of that success, having a certain amount of money, that's one of the biggest things that people get really um, they really focus on when, they, when they're dating and they're thinking about relationships and compatibility. But what you just said, I, I totally say that the same thing, which is don't worry about how much money somebody has in the bank account, but you know, where are they going? Like, what, is the, what are their dreams for their lives? Like, what's the work ethic? What's the, what's the desire to build together? Um, and I always talk about relationships as being a co-creation, right? It's not, it, it's not, you know, you're always, you're always half of the equation in your relationship. So, um, Ashley and Daryl, what would you say is, what would you say are the things about your relationship and your, your newlyweds? You just celebrated one year, right? Okay, so happy anniversary. <laughs> so, um, one year into marriage, but many years into, you know, being together and friendship. So, what do, would you say are the elements that you bring together that make your relationship work so well? Man, so Dee and I are opposites in a lot of ways. Yeah. Almost every way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, naturally, the things that I bring to the table, he really needs, and in his ways, I really need more of. Um, I think, you know, I am very structured. I like to live my life with a lot of structure. Daryl reminds me to be spontaneous. I can't plan every aspect of my life. I can't imagine if I were with someone who was just as like regimented and structured as, as I were. Like, you know, to Jeanette's point, we wouldn't have any fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we would just be like waking up, doing our to-do list over some tea or something. <laughs> like, that's boring. Um, so I think, and kind of going back to the, the first question, one of the things I, I love most about you, Daryl, is that you have always made me feel alive. I think that was part of the, the. <laughs> he liked that one. <laughs> I think that was part of the like the draw. The reason why we couldn't ever is because there was something so lively about him, lively about us, lively about our future. Like I, I, I just it always gave me a, a pep in my step. Um, 
And I think that's really important for a relationship and that's what keeps us going. We're never stagnant, we're never in the same place. Our lives are always changing and moving, but we have the confidence that we're always gonna have each other. Um, yeah. what, what would you say? I think, I mean, well, it's crazy because you, you kind of stole my answer, but... Um, See, I, you're more alike than you thought. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that, I think this, that's the same thing for me, right? Like, I, I, I think when you talk about compatibility and how relationships work, um, everybody tends to think about we got to like the same things and we have to want the same things and they got to want two kids, I got to want two kids and all of that. And some of those things are true, right? But, um, and we talked about this, like some, what really makes us stick are the differences that we have. Um, like she said, like she's very regimented. I'm not. Like, we was late today. So, <laughs> um, you but, made it though. Yeah. You're right on time. He's usually <laughs> eating a bagel. I'm like, Daryl. I'm like, we good. It's black people. It's gonna start late. Like, we, it's fine. It's fine. But like, those are the things that 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 help you grow too, right? Like, there's things that if, if she just liked to watch basketball with me all the time and thought everything that I liked, she liked. Um, it would just be, I would be dating the same person. And for me, I watch different stuff now because of her. Like, that's a stupid example, but like, I'm into team mom now. No, like, but that's real. I'm like, she put me onto that. Uh, like, <laughs> young and pregnant, like it's crazy. It's, these shows are crazy. You gotta watch them, guys. There's a theme, there's a but theme. But like, yeah, it's stuff like that. And, and I'll give a really good quick example. Like I, I've always been a dreamer. Like I, since I was very young, like I always had big dreams and you know, Daryl not so much. I don't mean that in a, in a bad way. Everyone's not like a, you know, often La La Land dreamer. But I think due to us being together, Daryl has seen that he can dream. He can do things other than just what he went to college to do. He can make money that's outside of just what they say the salary is because that's the life that I've always lived. And so sometimes you have to just lead by example and the other person will kind of come over to your side. And, and for me, when we even got married or well, not so much when we got married, I would say before that when we got into a relationship, Daryl was not a dreamer. He was still like, the nine to five guy, you know, okay, this is the job, went to school for finance, you know, whatever. And now we have a completely different life and he's so much more fulfilled. But had we been the same, we both would have been kind of living unfulfilling lives, but like loving each other, but you know, not being incredibly happy outside of the love that we share. And it's so important to have your life, your world, um, be colored and exciting and full outside of just whatever your relationship is, because life is about doing all of the things you want to do, not just being in love. Yeah. Yes, oh my God, I love all that. I love everything you just said, because it's, it really, I mean, it goes to my point, like it's a co-creation, it's what the two of you are coming together to bring. And I think people tend to think, I need to be with somebody who is just like me, right? Like I need to be with somebody, like, like I actually, um, like my, this is a silly example, but like my partner, he's, he's into cycling, and people are like, oh, do you, do you go, like, do you ride with him? I'm like, I do not. <laughs> I don't have any interest in that, but I love that he does. And I even had a friend of mine say, she's like, oh, you know, I just, like, I'm just so impressed that, you know, you even gave him a chance because I would never have given somebody a chance who had a hobby that I didn't have. And I was like, what? Why would you not? You know, because that, that is what makes it interesting. You know, you don't want to date yourself. You don't want to spend your life with yourself, right? Um, you, I mean, well, it's, you, yourself is wonderful, but <laughs> and not in another person, right? <laughs> you don't need double the dose. You, need, you do need to, you need to shake things up a bit. Um, so Robert, what is what are you? Because I didn't I didn't really get your answer. I mean I didn't ask you. Sorry, I skipped you. So okay. I would, but I would love to hear your thoughts on you know what do you think it is? What is the there's the friendship, but what do you think it is that allows you to make it work as a couple? What are you bringing together? I think um, I don't even want to say competition, but I, what inspiration? I, for me, it's. <laughs> No, no, like you know what? You're looking at when, me. When, when, well, when, Ashley, 
when Ashley and Daryl were talking, that's the word that I kept on thinking was inspiration. You, yeah. you inspire each other, so. It's an inspiration yeah. thing because uh, with JR, she, so we're news anchors in Washington, D.C., and she, she's not gonna want me to say this at all, but she's like a star. Like she's- Yes, she is. She's everything in, in Washington, yes. D.C. And she, in fact, you know, we're going through our sweep period right now, and she's on pace to have the number one newscast in, in Washington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sis. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She's a star. Yep. She is. I mean, in the car to the hotel, she's going to be like, why did you say all that? <laughs> um, but I, I feel like constantly, I don't want to say I'm playing catch up. But, but I try to be on that level that she's on. And I feel like if I were with someone who was right there with me or below me, I'm not saying that's bad, but the fact that she works so hard, I feel like I have to work hard too. You know what I'm saying? I have to work just as hard because she inspires me. Yeah. And I think that us working hard together just makes it all the more better. And I also think that affirmations are huge. I also yeah. think affirmations are huge. Babe, I'm so proud of you. Mm -hmm. I love what you're doing right now. You, I don't think you really understand what you're doing right now. You're, mm -hmm. you're changing the game and that works wonders. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, and I think that goes over a lot of people's heads. I think a lot of couples forget to do that, just to tell their significant other like, I see what you're doing. And it's crazy, like in a good way, you know what I'm saying? And I, I think that goes a long way. I think we both try to do a good, good job. We could always do a better job of it, but I think we try to get that in there every time we can, anytime we can, anytime there's some sort of, um, you know, congrats in order, we, we have to get that in yeah. because that's so important. Um, yeah. So yeah. I will say though, we, we um, God, what's the word? There is friendly competition. Because I it remember is, when you is. were ahead ratings wise, I'm like, you know, these things aren't legitimate. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> we, it wasn't legit when I was doing it. With yeah. these ratings numbers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, there's a bit of friendly competition, which is, which is good. It keeps it fun, keeps it spicy. Yeah. It does. <laughs> yeah. It does, yeah. Well, I think, I mean, and I don't know how many people in the room are on your dating journey right now. Um, you know, I really think of all of us, we're all on a love journey, and that is a lifelong journey. Um, and usually, well, a lot of how we're taught about relationships and our culture is very much like you meet the person, you, you know, you meet the right person, and then it all magically works out. You live happily ever after. And that's not true, <laughs> right? Like, it's, it's always, it's always, it's always going to take um, that effort and that co-creation over time. Um, but in terms of people who are on the dating portion of their love journey right now, what advice do you all have in terms of when you're dating and you're getting to know someone? Because you all had the benefit, you know, you worked together, um, you know, you, you met, were you in school when you first met? No, just graduated. you just graduated. Like within that year. Okay, so you, um, so you had that time to really establish that friendship before you got into the, into the romantic piece of it. But for people who are like, well, I'm dating, and so when you go on a date, you know, you're, you're already, you know, moving in that direction. So what's your advice for people as to, you know, the kinds of conversations to have, the kinds of questions to ask when you're getting to know someone? Um, I mean, I would say, before I let you all answer, you know, because another thing when you were talking before I was thinking um, is so important is how you feel when you're with this person, right? Like, and not just like, oh, do I feel attracted to them? But like, do I feel good? Do I feel seen? Do I feel heard? Do I feel like this person actually cares about who I am as a person? Um, so what is your advice for people when they're getting to know someone? How do you, how do you determine that? Uh, I would say a, a, a big major piece of advice is always be yourself. I think sometimes we, you know, we're like, okay, we have this date. I'm gonna be, I don't want him to see this side of me. I don't want the whatever to come out. I don't want the, but like, show your full self from the beginning. Do not reserve parts of yourself until you get to four months or until you go on three dates or something like that. Like, it is so important for someone to, to never look up and be like, I didn't know you were, or you, 
oh, such and such is coming out now. It's like, no, you got this from the beginning because if someone can't receive or appreciate your full self from the beginning, then what's the point of continuing? Um, I just, and I think going back to what we were saying, what we were talking about with our relationship, we were always our full selves. You know, he talks about the first day meeting me, he was like, yeah, I don't know, she might be a little too emotional. Well, guess what? He's right. <laughs> he was right. I am in touch with my emotions, so what's up? Can, can you deal with that? If not, ta-ta. You know, um, but I didn't, I didn't hide anything about myself, and neither did he. So, there, so I wasn't confused. Um, I would say that, and then I would also say, have fun. Dating should not be intense. Dating is fun. Like, enjoy your life. And also don't put so much pressure on dating. Like, continue to live your life outside of whatever dates or whatever you're doing. Like, because that's the thing. Like, if whoever, if you're single now, there will be a time if you're dating, it's, the goal is to not be single, right? So then enjoy the time that you're single. Because it doesn't, you don't get it back. You know what I mean? So have fun. Don't put so much pressure on it. And, and also, to your point, the feeling you'll know. Like, we all have intuition for a reason. It's, it's a God-given gift. So use it. If you have a weird feeling Amen with somebody, don't go out with them again. <laughs> Find somebody else that you don't have a weird feeling with. Like, it's, it's, it's really easy, you know? I would, say, I would say a couple of things. Be really careful, I guess, from experience. Uh, some people are well-intentioned. Be careful who you let in your ear. Um, there are people who um, project on you who, as we mentioned, um, make you follow their list, but they're not there when you're looking back on the opportunities you missed, the people who perhaps you were compatible with but decided to reject them because of this, what this well-intentioned friend was telling you. So just be very selective about who you let in your ear. Make sure it's a person who's wise, a person who knows you. Um, the other thing is the feeling. I feel like uh, increasingly we we put down what you feel over what it looks like on paper. So if it looks like a resume, if it looks really, really good on paper, then forget what you're feeling, then this is it. And I think the two work in harmony together. I was with Robert, I think what my mom picked up was that I was just, I had this joy. I was just really happy all the time. We were laughing all the time, we were friends. Again, this was a year after my father passed. I, I cried with you for the very first time, actually. So I struggle with vulnerability. And I was able to be vulnerable and open with him and let my guard down. And then also, he accepted all of me. I, I had been with men before who were intimidated by an ambitious woman, who wanted to be all that she is as a woman, eventually all that she is as a mom, all that she is as a wife and realize that it's, you, you, it's a balance. At some time, one thing will get more attention than the other, but they weren't intimidated by it. He embraced all of that. And I think you can tell early on whether a man wants you to be an accessory to who he is, or you all will complement each other, not complete each other. Um, we would not have worked if he was either intimidated or saw me as a like I said, as, a, as a, an accessory to like, what he is. And I think that's why we did really well together. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, intuition, which is what you're both talking about, is it is the number one gift that we have. Um, and so many people override their intuition in relationships. So many people. It's like, you know, you, in, these, in so many situations, you look back, you know, months later, years later, and you're like, I knew it. I knew it from the beginning and I didn't listen, right? Um, so to myself, I didn't trust myself, which I think gets into self-love and self-worth. And, and I, wanna, I, I wanna ask you a question about that, but I, just for the audience, um, I think we are gonna have time for a few questions. So if there is anyone in the audience who wants to ask a question, I don't know if we have a mic um, or we'll work it out, but just get your questions ready um, and we'll figure out. And actually, you can probably just stand up and shout it out, yeah. Yes, I'll repeat the question if we can't hear. So, um, but before we get to your questions, one last question, um, and it's about self-love. And, um, you know, this is, 
the foundation of what I do when I work with people is really helping people to understand their, their worth and understanding that love is an inside job, right? Um, so I would just love to hear your thoughts on the role of self-love and self-worth and having a healthy relationship that works. Oh, you want me to start? Yeah, you start, okay. Ashley. Um, Kick it off, Self-love is... I can't show up for Daryl, I can't show up for our marriage if I don't show up for myself first. And it's okay to admit if you're struggling with that. I think it's important though in choosing a partner that can see that and that can help edify you in that way. It's really, really important. Um, I, I, I think for me, uh, showing myself love is also uh, um, being intentional about self-care. You know, I, I think particularly when you're dating, it's important to love yourself and treat yourself the way that you want your potential partner to treat you. It's like you have to, uh, you know, you have to show people how you want to be treated. You really do. So you, I think oftentimes you have these expectations, right? Like, I want a, a guy or I want a, a woman or whatever. I want them to, you know get me a massage every week. I want them to have fresh flowers for me anytime we go on a date. I want them to make sure that I have dinner on the table by eight, but we don't do any of those things for ourselves. So it's, it's a little bit of like a, an empty, vapid ask. You have to show up for yourself in the ways that you want your partner to. And then oftentimes when you do that, your partner will exceed those expectations because you're doing it for yourself in such a genuine way. Um, and so that's what I try to do, you know? And it's easy to do because I'm also with someone who loves me so deeply and so genuinely. So it's, it's easier to, yeah. So it's easy to show up for, he's made it easier for me to show up for myself because Daryl will remind me, you know, if I'm complaining about something about my, you know, it's kind of like what Robert said, like the affirmations, that's so important. But Daryl reminds me to affirm myself. He's not just allowing me to rely on his affirmations of me. He's saying, but did you say it to yourself today? I'm telling you you look good, but did you tell yourself you look good today? Um, yes, Daryl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen. Yeah, he's... I'm that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, babe, you are. Um... So yeah, self-love is so important. And I, I just really think everyone should have a journal and they need to write down what that is for them and what makes you feel good and do that for yourself before you can expect a partner to do it for you. Yes, to all of that. Yes, Ashley. Um, Daryl, how about you? Yeah, I agree with everything she said. Um, but the only thing I'll add is, especially as a man, as a black man, um, something that Bash has helped me with. Sorry, I call her Bash. In case you guys didn't I think know. they picked up on that. Right. Yeah, we did. It's so cute. Yeah, I, guess I love we're it. 40 minutes into this by now. So, um, <laughs> but something that she's helped me with, because I wasn't somebody who really thought about self love or or self care for that matter, um, outside of just doing stuff that I that I wanted to do. But um, as a man, and as a, and more specifically as a black man, Bash has taught me that I need to talk to somebody else, right? Or, and that I need to. Um, tap into what my feelings are and kind of get that stuff out. Because there's, I walk through the world and I kind of just battle with my own demons on my own. Like I'm, I'm in the house and I'm, I might get quiet and she's like, what's wrong? I'm like, nothing. And I'm thinking about 30,000 things and how I get this money and uh, I got to get the cars washed and like all this other stuff, like, right, that goes through my mind. Um, but in talking to Bash, she's helped me to, to understand that, like, you don't have to do that by yourself right, and talking about therapy and um, just support groups and things like that that can get my center right, because if I'm not right, when I walk in the house, my energy is gonna be off, which then messes up our relationship, right? And then I'm, she's snapping at me because I'm not mad at her, but she think I'm mad at her because I'm thinking about something about myself that I ain't talked to nobody about and I can't figure out on my own and it's just, it's bad, it's all bad. The energy in the crib is messed up and we mad at each other. Um, so when I start with myself, my energy is good, I'm happy, which makes her happy, and seeing her happy makes me happy. So it, it's just Aww. like a never-ending circle. So You are that dude. <laughs> <laughs>
Because, um, yeah, okay, I, I mean, I, I just, I could talk to you <laughs> both all day about everything you just said. I love it so much. Um, Robert, Jeanette, what do you, what do you, how do you feel the role, what is the role of self-love in, in your life and your relationship? I, well, first of all, what, what Ashley said about Daryl, but have you told yourself? Um, that's, that's crazy. Like that is, that's, you know, I, I, I think, again, we do a lot of, you know, affirming each other. We do a lot can of I, telling Can I shout you out for a second, though? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a rough couple weeks. Yeah, go okay. ahead. <laughs> he's, he's always had a really strong sense of self and um, has, has a positive outlook on himself. He doesn't absorb uh, a lot of... I'll give you an example. I, I take, I internalize a lot of, of what's out there and I carry it with me. And you know, past trauma, I carry it with me. And it just seeps into everything in your relationship. So we're polar opposites in that sense. And it is wild just how much it can just totally flip on its head the dynamic of your relationship because you're struggling with lack of self-love and also the, I guess, not addressing it. Like we went years with me not actively addressing certain things that were affecting both of us. And like I said, he's always big on not just complimenting me physically, but my character, my, my morals, my, it, it just goes beyond the physical. And I will say, I don't think your journey of self-love, I think it's, it's your primary responsibility and your partner is complementary to that. I don't think it's fair to your partner to make, all the, to, to make them do all the hard, hard work. I think you should be leading that effort. I will also say the worst thing you can do is find a partner who exploits your lack of self-love. And sometimes yep. it, it's, it's subtle things. They exploit that and they take advantage of that. So the very, very first thing you can do is find someone who sees you, celebrates you, speaks it into you, and I think um, that goes a long way uh, in that sense. And with us, it's really, really helped me um, when, when it comes to that journey. Little things that I, I didn't notice before that he's always really been uh, good about. When it comes to therapy, marital counseling, he has no issues talking about his feelings, vulnerability, weaknesses, <laughs> insecurities. None of it, none of it. He's I mean, never had an issue with that. Because so. I'm not the only one with it. Mm -hmm. Not the only one with it. I ju just because I can talk about it doesn't mean nobody else in this room has deep issues. Uh, so, but I, I also think that, again, the self-love I, my belief is that you need that push from your partner mm -hmm. to have self-love. Not, oh, like you said, it shouldn't be the complete, it shouldn't be all on your partner, but you need that nudge. You need that extra little, like, you doing it, you know. You are that guy. Yeah. You, know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you're that guy. Well, you're you need girl. to love yourself enough to be with somebody who's going to support you there like you that. Go. And there shout you, you out like that. Yes. Yeah. You just wrapped the bow on it for me. <laughs> so, there you go. so there you go. Thank you, Francesca. See, you're that guy too. All Thank right. you. Thank um, you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I want to give our audience a chance. Um, we have time for a couple of questions. If anyone has, oh, there we go. When you guys were together. Um, I know you were saying that you lost your father, so I experienced the same. Um, so that was a storm. But when you guys because a segment is like how you know, right? So when you guys were going through your first storm, how was that handled that kind of reaffirmed like, okay, this is my person? Um, and it probably happened maybe even after you already were married. Um, so like, I know I'm married. We went through a lot of storms before and like that was a major like, okay, that's my guy because of how you dealt with things I've never gone through before. We got this. So I want to hear you guys' stories of like, because, you know, when it's unicorns and stuff, you know, and fairy dust, and they're great. But when it's, like, something really, really hard, how did you guys handle that? That I'll reaffirmed it. I'll say for me, we've been through infertility, PCOS, IVF, IUI. <laughs> uh, that 
we've been through four and a half years long distance marriage. The first four and a half years of our marriage was long distance. I moved two months to Philadelphia, two months before we got married. Um, that was the most trying, most Very difficult time, time in our marriage where we talked about divorce. I mostly, I have, I have, I'm the kind of person that sometimes will run away from a problem and um, will look for an exit. He's the kind of person where it's like, no, we're going to sit down and we're going to talk about this. If we, this ends, it's not because of me. We said, we, right, that's what we would say. That's is what that I the, would say. Is that exactly what we said? I think that's literally oh, okay. what we said. We, <laughs> so, I said, if we get a divorce, it's, uh, it's not going to be because I want it. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. And so the point is, he is the calm in my storm. He is the level head. <laughs> He's level-headed. He doesn't act on emotion. He rides it out. He's taught me that. Um, that is like the constant reminder of him being the one for me, right? Like that's what compliments me. I need someone who can stay level-headed, who keeps his cool, who, you know, a lot of men talk about they want to be the leader. You got to have leader qualities. You don't, you're not just by default a leader. I'm just saying, you got to be leading me somewhere Facts. in order for me to follow you. Facts. Um, I know, we all need to applaud. And he's shown those qualities, and I have no problem uh, in those aspects following him when he's shown the strength and, and the willingness yeah. to be that person. That's how I knew he was the one. And this is not just me. This is vice versa. Like, I, I recently had a lot of issues going on with my job. Like, and I, that I had never experienced before when it seemed like there was no way I was going to be able to bounce back from this. Mm -hmm. But I had her. Mm -hmm. I had her. And if I didn't have her, I didn't know what I would do. Mm -hmm. The advice, the comfort, all of that. And I'm, I'm, I don't want to be long-winded about it, but basically, yeah, just having her to weather the storm. Who is inspired by these beautiful couples? <laughs> That was, that, was, that was beautiful, thank you. Um, I know we have another question here. Can we get the mic to this? There we go. Thank Lovely. you. Hello, good afternoon. <laughs> My name is Natasha. Thank you so much. I'm inspired by you all, literally. Thank you. I love the doc. I, know, I feel like I know you, because I'm like, I watch it like, what was it, every Sunday? Um, <laughs> or on demand. So just thank you for being so vulnerable with your stories. I'm just so blessed. Um, so my question, Ashley, you mentioned this. Me and my girlfriend were literally, I called her in the bathroom at work. Like, I'm ready to date, girl, because I wasn't saying that in August. So <laughs> um, she was, you know, we talked about, she was like, call it out. What do you want? You know, I said it in the bathroom. And she was like, and don't put so much pressure on it. Mm. That is always the question of like, what does that really mean? Yeah. Like, don't put so much pressure on it. And I don't know if it has to do with growing up in a church and things like that, but I feel like, I just feel like the person I date, I want to marry. Like, I don't feel like I want to be just out here in these streets, like giving my heart, giving yeah. my time. And I just, I guess I'm almost asking like the blueprint, like what is dating? And like, what does it really mean? I feel like people don't really talk about like what healthy dating is and what does it look like to not truly put pressure on it but then have expectations, because I think women, we're always, like, we can yeah. meet somebody and, like, oh, that could be a husband. We can name it. You know, we just make the fairy tale in our head, and the man just said hi. So <laughs> I just truly want to know what does it mean to not put pressure on it when you do have expectations? Like, how do you not get hurt, do it healthy, and it's purposeful? I think that's my question. So here, here's the thing. I can't, we can't guarantee any of that. You might get hurt. You might have expectations that are not met. You might meet somebody you think is the one and they are 1,000% not the one. Like all of this is, is very probable and actually highly likely. But I think the thing, the blueprint to dating is knowing that it's all setting you up for who is. It's like life, right? It's, it, that goes for jobs. It goes for friendships. It goes for anything. Everything is a setup. So it's about being able to take the hard times that might come and saying, okay, God, I know you have a bigger plan though. And also be able to sit down and, and not only lament about maybe whatever didn't go right, but be grateful for the lessons you learned. Cause that's the thing, it's all about perspective, right? We can look at things and be all, oh, woe is me. And that was the worst thing that ever happened to me. But then when you really dissect it, you're like, actually I'm stronger. 
I know more now. Now I know for sure what I like and what I don't like. Now I know I should have trusted my intuition after that second date. I won't do that again, right? So again, I think part of removing the expectations too is to have fun. If you trust your gut, which we were talking about is your God-given gift, you don't have to put so much energy into it. Your body is going to tell you. When you go home after that date and lay down at night, you're going to know how you feel about it. We, we all just choose to ignore it. But I would say lead with the intention of following your instincts and your intuition and see what comes out of that. And believe that you will have the partner. If you know that was promised to you, he doesn't make mistakes. So just sit back, have a good time, and wait for your partner to come. And remember that you'll know. You'll know. Yes, Ashley. <laughs> Amazing answer. Um, so I, we, we have to wrap up, unfortunately, because I could absolutely have this conversation with you all all day long. This is amazing. Um, that was a great question, and I just have to add to it because I, I, you know, I'm a love coach. I have to. Yes. Um, so I, I, really encourage, I really encourage you and everyone who's dating to embrace dating as a process that is teaching you all of the love skills that you need to be in a relationship that lasts. Mm -hmm. Right, because the relationship is not the prize, you are the prize, right? And so just like Ashley said, you're learning, you're learning from those experiences, you're learning what you want, you're learning what you need, you're learning what is the deal breaker for you, you're learning to trust yourself, you learn to love yourself, you learn because yes, even if you are with the most perfect partner for you and you are together for the next 60 years, at some point you're gonna have to say goodbye, right? So pain, we can't avoid pain, but you can strengthen your um, confidence and your, your um, resources within yourself to know that I'm, I'm gonna be okay because I've got me. And then you can get excited about being with a partner and what you can create together, right? But you are already the prize. So enjoy yourself. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I wanna say one thing, I know we gotta wrap. One thing as a caveat, like to close this whole discussion, um, what works for one relationship not only does not necessarily work for you, it could be detrimental to yeah. your relationship. I like to say this because I think in this age of couple goals, hashtag relationship goals, that is so dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Because ev the beauty of all of us is that we're all so different. Mm -hmm. And the biggest mistake I made was asking friends, again, well-intentioned, asking them, well, what works for you? And then wanting to apply that to my relationship, and it's an issue. So we say all of this speaking from our personal experiences, where we come from, the experiences we've had in life, our past traumas, our, all, of it, all of it influences what works for us. Yep. So just keep that in mind. Be careful who you share your relationship vulnerabilities with, who you ask for advice. Again, the best of intentions, but ultimately what works for you, works for you. And some folks may criticize what works for you. If you're respecting each other, if you love each other, if you each feel good at the end of the day, that is all that matters. All right. So I hope you, you take that away from this discussion. Yeah. Well said, well said. Thank you, Robert and Jeanette. Thank you, Ashley Thank and Daryl. You. Thank you to all thank of you. you. Thank you for two amazing questions. Thank you, Cody, to, for having us yes, all. Yes, thank, um, thank you. Yay, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna go now. Okay. <laughs>